This video is all about the tools and techniques relating to copper foil. Watch out for a follow-up video on how we foiled this stained glass window, and be sure to stay until the end because I will reveal my favorite way that I've found to be the most efficient and accurate way to foil stained glass. The tools featured in this video are copper foil of many different sizes and colored backing. We'll demonstrate these products and why you may need different sizes a little later on. Cleaning supplies such as glass cleaner, rags, and possibly alcohol as it does evaporate a bit faster and can increase your working time during the cleaning process. Hand foil and table foilers can be extremely handy to speed up your foiling techniques. But which of these do I think is the best and most useful? Demonstrations and opinions given later on in the video. Burnishing tools and fids will be a necessary component to properly completing your copper foil project. There are many options, but which are the most useful? The blue foil caddy is handy to help organize all the different sizes that you'll be using. If you have multiple backed colors in your copper foil, you may need one caddy per color to keep from mixing everything up. I find that this also gives a pretty obvious visual cue of when you're running low on a particular size, so you'll know well ahead of time to reorder. There's nothing like being in the middle of a project and being out of material. Scissors, X-Acto blades, and good lighting will be extremely helpful in completing your copper foil stained glass project. So what really is copper foil? Copper foil is an adhesive backed foil that can be purchased in multiple sizes and colored backings. It's used to wrap stained glass to prepare them to be soldered together for a stained glass window composition. You can see different sizes of copper foil in the blue caddy ranging from 1 8 inch to 1 half inch. Size is not the only differentiator between these foils. There is also the backing color. There is a bare copper backing, a black backing, and a silver backing. Most sizes come in the bare copper backing, but some do not in the black or silver. The reason for different color backing is to match up with the same color as the finished product. You may use any color backing if the glass is completely opalescent, meaning it cannot be seen through, as the backing color only matters if the glass is translucent, meaning you can see the backing through the glass. Once the piece is soldered, it may be patinaed. If left unpatinaed, the best option for the backing would be silver. If patinaed black, the best option would be black. You could do either the black or the copper finish for copper patina, but I find that the backing of the foil is significantly brighter and more reflective than the copper patinaed solder, and it may look a little bit too reflective compared to the matte finish of the copper patinaed solder. Now that we know what the colors are, let's talk about the sizes. The differences are mostly cosmetic. However, the larger sizes will have a larger overlay on the glass, causing the solder line to be a bit wider. While this difference is cosmetic, it does also have some utility. The wider solder lines will have more strength, so it may be important to beef up, so to say, this line in areas where there is an uneven amount of weight holding to one spot. We'll demonstrate this shortly. Before we start, we should talk about how to properly organize and handle your foil. When we remove the foil from the bag, we always label the inside of the roll, the size, and color, just in case you're not sure a little later on. You may purchase a caddy so you have a place to store and dispense your foil, as the roll can easily rotate in this caddy so it will be a little bit easier. Alternatively, you can tape the edges to keep it from unspooling wildly and making a big mess. You'll end up either wasting time respooling the roll, or you'll waste money throwing away the big mess of foil. So do yourself a favor and learn from my mistakes. Before you begin, you must ensure that your glass edges are properly cut. If you have any fractured edges or any other edges that are not 90 degrees, then you'll need to grind those down. I have seen some individuals grind all the glass to be 100% certain. This spot, I will leave this chipped edge so that we can see exactly why these should be ground down a little later in the video. If you use a special bit, like this ripple bit, it will also trim down any additional texture of the glass so you'll get a perfect foil job every time. You must be sure to clean your glass edges so that there is no cut or oil, glass dust, or other contaminants because it will compromise the adhesion between the foil and the glass edge. Be sure that both your hands and the piece are clean and dry before starting. The main goal when copper foiling is to get an even reveal of foil on both sides of the glass. Now, copper foil has this paper backing that covers up the adhesive part. To get the peel started, I'll normally squish the foil between my fingers and it will misalign the foil and the backing, allowing me to start peeling it. I'll normally peel a few inches to start. We'll be using a 7 seconds inch foil for this demonstration, as that is our normally used foil. The first and most basic technique is to use your hands to foil your pieces. The most commonly practiced technique is to look down at the edge of your glass and set the glass onto the foil trying to center it perfectly. 
I'll normally put about half inch of foil adhered onto an edge before a corner and I'll secure this portion down with my finger. Once you have it centered, rotate the piece. Not too hard because you can rip the foil on the corner of the glass. Reach around for the next corner. As long as you center the foil on that corner, the full edge between the initially foiled edge and that corner will align properly. This works with straight cuts. I'll push the edge of the glass into the foil as I go. Once we have worked the foil back around to the beginning, we'll overlay about one quarter to one half inch to finish properly wrapping the piece. If you are misaligned, you can peel it up and try again. Try not to touch the adhesive or do too much over peeling because it will no longer stick. You'll want to pay attention and be sure you have a clean overlap between the two layers. If you need to, you can try closing one eye and moving your head back and forth to view both sides of the pieces. I'll normally cut the foil with scissors or tear it away. If your overlapping foil is too far one way or another, you can trim it away with an X-Acto blade seen here. I'll normally do a ziplock bag closing motion to bend the foil over the edges. I'll zip up to a corner, then tuck in the foil underneath the edge so that I can fold the next edge over and seal up that corner. Right here is what happens when you don't grind down and ensure that the pieces have a 90 degree edge. It creates problems with the foil adhering and from having a uniform appearance across the edge. After zipping down all the pieces, I'll see that we have an area where the foil is unevenly applied to the glass. We can take it off by cutting it out and reattaching the piece. It's best to overlay about a quarter inch to a half inch over the existing foil. You could also simply overlay the foil over the existing piece instead of removing the existing. Another option is to set the glass down onto a work surface. And you may need to use a contrasting color paper on your work surface if you have a hard time seeing the colored backing. This is a quick and easy fix. At this point, we will now begin burnishing. This is where different burnishing tools come in handy. All of these do the same basic principle, and that's to remove any wrinkles or other voids between the glass and the foil. I'll normally burnish the glass edge first, then do the faces. This is because you don't want a void between the foil on the face and the edge, as you may lock in an air gap if you do do the face first. After doing the edges, you'll want to burnish the face in towards the center instead of away from the center because you can knock it off the edge of the glass. Burnishing is important because if there are voids between the glass and the foil, flux or other contaminants can force its way into this area and cause the foil to separate. And that's another big mess you definitely want to avoid. Now all of these instructions are for straight pieces, but what if you need to do curved pieces? Eh, there's almost never curved pieces in stained glass, so we won't worry about that. <laughs> For curved pieces, we will have to do something a bit different because we will either be stretching or compressing the foil along this curve. For convex curves, you'll need to gradually apply pressure down the foil to ensure it is centered along the entire edge as it's pressed down. This is different from the straight edge because you only have to line it up from corner to corner and the full edge will be properly aligned. Now we will need to be sure it's aligned fully as it is pressed down. The foil will compress and there's really not much more to it than you need to do a bit of extra burnishing to really smooth it over. Foiling concave curves takes a bit more time. You will need to apply a good bit of pressure to the foil as you run it along the curve. Once the edges are fully adhered, it will be time to burnish the edges. I normally do the straight edges like normal. Then, once arriving at the curb, you'll need to apply some back and forth pressure to heat up the foil slightly. Gradually fold it over the face of the glass, and most of the time you will get away with no tears. However, if you do get a tear, there are a few methods to fixing this. I normally just cut a spare piece of foil and fold it over and trim the excess to match the curb of the existing foil. You could also replace it if you wanted to. Thicker and thinner glasses will call for different sizes of foil. This mirror is 1 quarter inch thick versus the 1 8 inch thick clear glass. Here we use the 3 8 inch for this quarter inch glass. Hand blown glass tends to be not as consistent size as machine rolled, so if you are working with this glass type, you may run into the need for bigger foil more often. Highly textured glass pieces do add a bit of complexity to this process. It's essentially the same process, but you must be sure to press the foil between all the divots of the texture. Sometimes I'll use my fingernail as I can really feel how well the foil is being applied between the texture versus using some sort of burnishing tool. Things to look out for. Unclean or not dry glass. Correct backing color for the finished product. Exposed corners. Uneven foiling torn edges that need patching. Now that we have covered the basic technique, we will take a closer look at some of the other tools that will make this process just a bit easier. First is the table foiler. It includes multiple wheels used for different sizes of copper foil. 
We are using the 732 inch wheel today. The plastic wing nut is used to bring the foiling wheel up or down along the bolt that is spring loaded from the base. This will calibrate the foiler to work with the specific thickness of our glass. You'll lock the roll of foil into the plastic pins and unspool into this notched out plastic pin. The backing will separate at this point. You'll want to be sure to have the copper part against the wheel, not the adhesive part. This will allow the glass to fit into the wheel and press the foil onto its edges. You'll calibrate the wheel to allow the glass to be perfectly in the center. The wheel can get stuck on this plastic pin, so you may have to shake it a bit to get it loose sometimes. Once it's in place, you'll force the glass into the foiler. It will fold the foil over, but you'll still need to burnish it after. While it may not do a perfect job, it does do a pretty good job. And with some practice, I think you'll be able to shave a ton of time off your foiling job. I found it to be helpful to cut out the part that was initially pressed into the foiler, as it can get bent backwards by the table as you press the remaining glass through the foiler. I found it to be quite easy to go back and place an additional piece on top in any place that was pushed out or bent out of place. This is definitely a two-handed operation, as you need to apply a decent bit of force into the roller to get all the foil to set properly. You probably will want to either grind glass or wear gloves for this step. Overall, satisfactory results and very quick compared to the hand foiling. This tool is the Creator's Foiler. It's a simple but very useful tool. To get the tool started, you'll want to fold the end, push the foil through the opening on the bottom with the copper end on the exposed side and the adhesive down. Pull the foil out and separate the backing. Remove about three inches of backing and pull the foil back through the opening towards the roll until it comes out the other end. Remove the backing and as the foil is pulled back through, it will separate. At the top of the tool, slide the foil in sideways through the opening and now you are ready to start foiling. I normally remove a few inches of material as it's pretty bent and kinked at this point. Now you'll simply grab a piece and force it into the grooves of the wheel. It will automatically center the glass in the foil. You'll want to take the corner slowly to avoid tearing. Then you'll burnish like normal. Now this tool can be demonstrated here as a hand tool, but there's actually an even easier way. The last method does require a small amount of setup, but if you can get past that, then this is my preferred method to foiling glass. I like to clamp this tool down onto the table and use both hands to secure the glass and push it through firmly into the groove to really center it up. This method I find to be the fastest and most accurate. It's also extremely quick and easy to overlay a small piece. It worked quite well for both concave and convex curves. To test the speed, I did the exact same piece by hand and one on the creator's foiler. I was able to foil the piece with the creator's foiler about 19 seconds faster. It may not seem like much, but if you do that 100 times, that's about 30 minutes. It certainly adds up. So that's essentially how to foil glass. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments and I'll be certain to answer them. If I left anything out, please also leave that down below. Watch out for our next video where I go through the basics on how I foiled this honeybee stained glass window. Thanks for watching.